Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Dennis Borosh and today we're going to learn a beautiful, beautiful variation. I loved it since childhood, the Leuvenfish variation. And as you might see at the diagram, it is mate in 14 and White just delivered a smothered checkmate with the move knight e7, the king takes run two. Now the Leuvenfish variation has had a prominent feature in the Queen's Gambit where Beth Harmon learned how to play this variation from the janitor. Let's take a look how we get to this solution and this smother's mate. So here in the dragon variation comes after g6. The first moves you play e4, c5, d6, or this is the Sicilian. A6 would be the Nidorf, but he first shows G6, which is the Dragon. F4, the whole plan is to break through before Black manages to go and hide the King on G8. Ship G7, E5, a very strong move, just following through with the plan. B takes E5, F takes E5, five. Now if you would go Knight G4, then there's Bishop B5 check. And if the Bishop would block, then this Knight would be undefended and you could capture. Untouchable because the king is pinned. And if king f8, there's this beautiful win of knight e6, hitting both the king and the queen while also double attacking that queen on d8. So, in case of a capture, it's queen d8 checkmate. Coming back, there's knight d5. This is the main line of this miniature variation. Bishop b5 check. White is going for the quick castling. King f8. If anything gets in front, I can just capture the knight as it's no longer defended by the queen. King f8, castles. Now knight takes would run into the same tactical trick we looked before. Another knight fork and we capture the lady. So white has to face bishop takes e5 instead. Bishop h6 check, king g8. If bishop g7, you can capture, capture lure the queen out to d5 and again this queen which was defended by the rook on h8 is no longer defended so there is this very nice sacrifice of knight f5 check and if they capture this queen takes d5 and white is winning the queen so here black has to go king g8 knight takes d5 he takes d5 knight f5 now you cannot capture that knight obviously because the queen is hanging and after queen takes d1 you're not capturing the queen take the pawn and you checkmate now this looks like a simple variation but it's actually very tricky to face with black and i myself played the Leuvenfish variation when i was a young teenager around age 12 against my main rival in fact that was my biggest win with this very same variation Let's take a look at a practical game that was played in this f4 line, that is the Leuvenfish f4. And in this case, noting that white is going for this e5 break, black actually plays knight c6 to stop and try to control that. Therefore, white usually takes on c6, eliminating that defender so e5 can be played. Five, just trying to attack while this king is still in the center, knight e7. E takes d6, e takes d6, bishop e3, bishop e7. Notice if the bishop would move to the usual long diagonal, which is typical of the dragon, then that d6 pawn would fall and there would be no signs of castling going on because that would be illegal. The queen is controlling that square right there. The bishop e7 is played and has to be played just to protect that pawn. Queen d2. On castles, knight f6, h3. And this is the big plan in the Leuvenfish. You want to break with e5, but you always have aggressive intentions. So you either go long and go launching g4 and f5 in, or you go for a quick attack with a short castle if black doesn't stop e5. Bishop e6, g4, launching the pawns forward, because any kind of exchanges in front of that king would lead to an advantage for white. Because both sides are castled on the opposite sides, white would be the one in advantage. Queen a5, bishop g2, 
is putting pressure on some of those pawns and connecting the rooks. In chess, most of the time, communication between pieces is what matters most. Rook b8, b3. A very strong move, just stopping all the tactical ideas for black. And now white has free play on the queen, on the king side, that is. Queen side is actually safe now. d5, f5. And here comes the attack we've been aiming for. You're chasing away black's good piece on e6. Bishop d7, e1, bishop d4. Centralizing, defending the knight, and setting up mates on g7. Knight e8, fg, fg, rook f1. Just bringing pieces closer to the king. Knight c7, bishop e5, knight e6. And here white plays a beautiful, beautiful sacrifice. Bishop takes d5, and even though black can capture, knight captures back, which is a brilliant move, because if you would take the queen, there is knight e7 checkmate, and there's no running away for the king. Therefore, black is forced to cover the e7 square, plays queen c5, rook takes f8, rook takes f8, queen takes b4, but now white gets that extra pawn, and already... In move 26, white has an overwhelming advantage. Takes, bishop c8, knight d5, knight f6. And here, black resigned because king f7 runs into checkmate as there's nowhere, no place left on e8 or g8 to run to. And those other pieces on g6 and e6 are covered by black's own pieces. Therefore, it's checkmate. So as you can see, Leuven fish variation is all about aggressive play. But were there any victims of the highest level in this variation? Well, yes. In fact, Bobby Fischer, who was an inspiration for the movie The Queen's Gambit, his main opponent, Boris Spassky, lost in mere eight moves in a small little miniature against Viktor Korchnoi. So let's take a look at that one. So again, it is the f4 line in the Leuvenfisch, and instead of knight c6 and bishop g7, which we already discussed, Boris Spassky played bishop g4, trying to counterattack the queen. However, Viktor Korchnoi notices that this king is still in the middle, so it makes sense to go for quick development. He gives a check, puts pressure on the king, knight d7, bishop takes d7, queen d7, and queen d3. And even though black got the bishop pair, this bishop is suddenly entrapped. So if black would unsuspectingly go bishop g7, white would go h3, bishop e6, and f5, and the bishop is near trapped on that square. Same goes with bishop h5, g4, this bishop is trapped, and white is winning a piece. So black, that is Spassky, the big rival of Bobby Fischer, played e5 right here. Knight f3, bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, and then for queen g4, hoping that the situation would clarify and they get an endgame. And there was an endgame, but after knight d5, he had to resign. Because if you take on f3, there's knight takes f6 check, winning a knight, king e7, and if white would capture, it would be no problem for black, but there is this beautiful move of knight d5 check, making sure the knight is protected by the pawn. And when the king moves closer, g takes f3, and the white is winning a piece and the game. Therefore, after knight d5, Boris Spassky resigned. So that is all for the Leuvenfish. This is the way you can win quickly with the Leuvenfish variation against the dragon. I hope you really enjoyed this lecture and see and understand that this can be played against even a world champion. Thank you for watching.